Welcome. Happy Wednesday. I'm so glad we could be together today for our circuits yoga class today. As you can see, I'm not in my typical space. I'm in my kitchen right now. My daughter's taking over our studio downstairs. So I'm here. So a little different than normal, but that's okay. We're going to make it work. Today, we're going to be doing a no repeat circuit. So we're going to be working similar muscle groups with just different exercises. We're going to be kind of challenging ourselves in different ways today. Now, all you're going to need is you're going to need dumbbells today. As always, I like to have you to have a nice variety of weights so that you can grab and switch out whenever you need to. So make sure they're nearby and easily accessible. Make sure that your space around you is trip hazard free. So there's no space, nothing around you that you can be, you know, hurting yourself with. So today we're going to start off with a warm up, approximately five to seven minutes, and then we're going to get right into our upper and lower body and core portion of our class and then move into our circuit uh, to our yoga additionally if you have just for yoga if you have a strap it'd be great to have it we're going to be doing a little bit of stretches for our hamstring and it band today so let's go ahead and we're going to take a nice big breath and just get ourselves centered here on the mat today so feet hip distance apart feet facing forward knees so nice and soft bend the knees sweep the arms up take a nice big breath in oh and exhale release it out Kind of just bringing ourselves here, take a nice big breath in, kind of working at your own perfect pace here, no pressure. Beautiful, as always, make sure that your workout works for your body today. And just make any adjustments that you need, whether you want to impact, increase the intensity or lower the intensity of whatever you do today, just make it work for you today. The lat next time you swim your arms up towards the sky, make sure the shoulder distance apart, drop the shoulders away from the ears, make it nice and soft here. Grab the right wrist, so let's just do a gentle side bend here. Keep your body tall, pull up through your belly, lengthen through your spine, give those shoulders a nice little stretch and ribs a nice little stretch. Beautiful. Inhale back through center. Let's grab that left wrist and just lean over towards the right. Get nice and tall here through the spine. I want you to space. Beautiful. Let's do that one more time. Right wrist over to the left. Gentle, kind of guiding that right wrist. Oh, nice job. One more time. Over to the right side. Grab that left wrist. Give yourself a nice little side bend. Fantastic. Inhale, come back through center. Let the arms kind of drift back behind you. Shoulder roll. Let's come into a chest expansion here. So as you interlace the fingers, open up the heart, pull the sternum up towards the sky, gaze is forward upon the horizon, shoulder blades back and down. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and swim the arms forward. Interlace the fingers. Press the palms away. Round the shoulders. Drop the chin towards the chest. Give the back of the neck a little stretch. Beautiful. Nice job. Let's go ahead and release the arms and lift the chin. Let's go ahead and get into some squats here. So today I want you to think of your squats as just a way to oil up the joints. So we're not working really more of a mobility thing that we're starting with in our warm up today. All right, feet facing forward, hips are going to kick back, back is nice and long. So just go ahead and gentle. Just want you to kind of feel the movement through the hip joint and through the knee joint. It's kind of oiling up that area of the body, getting that synovial fluid kind of nice and um, surrounding the joint so we can get that mobility in. Make sure you're pressing into your heels. Remember, warm ups are there to create heat. I'm not looking for you to be out of breath at any point during our warm up. If that's the case, I want you to slow things down a little bit. Keep the breath nice and deep to the belly. Beautiful. Nice job. All right, let's keep going for another 10 more seconds or so. Good, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice job, come on up to standing. Next, we're gonna be doing a little bit of dynamic movement, a little side lunge here. So let's take that right foot out. Both feet are facing forward as if you have an upside down V shape. We're gonna kick the hips back, bend into that right knee, and then lift back to base. Here we go down and then up so don't move that right leg we're just kind of balancing into it but i want you to work the quad again building a little bit of heat here you can feel that strength through the right leg back is long abs are pulled in good looking great everyone well done beautiful make sure those hips are kicking back behind the toes i want you to make sure that your alignment is really spot on here so it feels good feels supported nice job keep going excellent let's do two more and then we're going to switch right over to that other side nice last one 
and come on up. Beautiful. Keep those feet facing forward. Kick the bum back and lift up. Beautiful. Keep going. Beautiful. Welcome, Amir. I'm super glad you're here today. As I was telling everybody, we're in a different space today. We're in my kitchen today. <laughs> my basement's being, my studio's being used by a sleepover my daughter's having today. So welcome. <laughs> I'm super glad you're here. We're just getting our warm up on. Beautiful. All right. Bend into that leg. Link. You can feel a little stretching going on into that right inner thigh. Back is long. Feel that power through the leg here. Just getting that bit of heat. Nice job. Excellent. You've got it. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Come on up. Now we're going to stand in our sumo squat position. Feet are going to externally rotate, toes to the corner, heels to the center. We're going to bend and lift. Bend and lift. Squeeze those glutes. Bring those inner thighs towards center. Beautiful. Nice job. Now I want you to make sure you've got that nice opening through the knees here. So you've got some good inner thigh activation as well as making sure that that posture is spot on again. So just make sure your knees are not caving in. Being careful to keep those structures really nice and grounded and firmly built up like a good, well-built house, right? Nice job. We're gonna create a little pulse here. So let's get down. Pulse, pulse, and lift. Pulse, pulse, and lift. Squeeze those inner thighs. Pulse, pulse, and lift. You got it. Nice and strong, looking great. Beautiful. Try not to snap into those joints. I want you to lift up strong. Pull up those quads, pull up those patellas. Nice job, keep going. We got 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful, bring those feet in towards center. Let's meet at the top of our mat. We're gonna go into some reverse lunges. All right, so for those of us who are taking care of our ankles today, if you've got any sort of instability here, feel free to just make it a short high lunge. You don't have to go low, okay? So be careful for that. Start at the top of our mat. Three, two, one, back, and back to base. Beautiful. So I want you to take it nice and slow and steady. I want you to make sure your gaze is forward as if you're looking straight ahead here. This can be great to work on balance. Again, we're just warming up the body, priming it for our workout here. We're going to be doing some of these movements again. So just so you know, this is our warm up, but we're also going to twinkle in some of these into our set. Fantastic. Keep it going. Beautiful. Excellent. Stay with me for 10, 9. Keep that breath to the belly. Whew. Beautiful. Three, two one and rest nice job march it out here we go beautiful looking great everyone nice job now march it i want you to pull up those knees towards your core get those arms moving here beautiful that's it nice job let's go ahead take a nice inhale sweep the arms up towards the sky and then exhale bring it down shoulder height strong t march with our arm circles Whew. Beautiful. Pull up those knees a little higher. That's it. Great job. Excellent. All right. Stay here for 10. We're going to reverse our direction. I've got a medium sized circle here. I want you to have control through the movement of the arms here. So no arms flopping, energized through the fingertips. Let's go ahead and reverse the direction. Other way. Kind of working out any kinks here. If you've got some crunchiness in the shoulder girdle, Relax the arms, take a little break, maybe even lower them if that needs, that feels better, okay? Stay with me for 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, nice job, beautiful, 4, 3, 2, 1, nice job, rest those arms. Let's do one more bend and stretch. This time we're going to squat down and reach, squat and reach, squat and reach. 
Beautiful. Pull up through the belly, lengthen through the spine. Now imagine you're not quite between two panes of windows, but what I don't want you to do is round forward. Think about what happens to the spine when we round forward and we go into lateral flexion. We create rotation and we create flexion. So, and then we got a lateral bend in there too. So I want you to stay tall. I want you to imagine your arm is rainbowing right over the crown. Beautiful. And your spine is long and you're not rotating with that right shoulder forward. Last one. Beautiful. Bring that arm back. Left arm reaches over, bend and reach. Nice and tall. Beautiful. Ground into those feet. Nice job. Looking great. Nice and steady. Excellent. Almost there. You've got it. Keep going. Nice and tall here. So as you press into those legs, you grow tall like a tree. Then you kind of sway over to the side here. Doesn't have to be a big lateral bend. Remember, find that range that works for your body. Good job. Keep it going for five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Nice job. Shake it out. Fantastic, everyone. All right. Hopefully your body's feeling a bit warmer and your, your head space is feeling ready. We're going to get into our main set. So as I said at the beginning of our class today, we're going to be doing a no repeat circuit today. We're not going to be repeating the same exercise twice like we normally do. We're going to be moving through different body parts, different areas, different muscle groups, but we're going to be working them in multiple faceted ways, multiple ways, different exercises, same muscle groups. Let's go ahead and grab our weights. We're going to be doing a weighted squat to begin with. Now we're going to be adding a pulse with the weighted squat, similar to what we did in the sumo squat. So so feet are going to face forward. Please make sure that you take a look down at the feet. Make sure your feet are facing forward and they're not externally rotated here. We're going to come into a front squat here. Shoulders roll back. Here we go. In three, two, one. Let's go down and lift. Now, I want you to make sure you're pressing in through the heels. Glutes are turned on. Tall through the body. Beautiful. Now, remember, this is your workout, right? You get to choose what you want to do today. So make sure you honor your body today. Maybe you want to go faster. Maybe you want to go slower. You choose. It's your choice. Just listen to that. Good. We've got about 12 seconds left. Keep it going. Excellent. You got it. Beautiful. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Nice job. Fantastic. Shake that off. Excellent. Well done. Whew. All right. Next, we're going to be doing some bicep curls. We're going to be rolling the shoulder blades back, open up the palms, straight up bicep curls. We'll do single, single and double. Here we go. Three, two, one. Single single and double beautiful nice and steady so palms are facing forward got a little external rotation of that shoulder tall through the spine here make sure you're careful to keep your back nice and supported by drawing in that core tailbone down beautiful a little coordination always good right that neuromuscular connection, <laughs> brain and muscle. <laughs> Good job. Beautiful. Whew. That's it. Looking great, guys. Well done. We're almost there. Beautiful. Well done. Keep it going. We got eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one and rest excellent job fantastic well done beautiful all right let's grab a little water break next we're going to go into some reverse lunges single leg reverse lunges again this time we're going to be going back with right leg and then back to base however let's say 
that doesn't feel good. Maybe you've got some ankle things going on today and you want to stay firmly grounded here. You're welcome to stay in a lunge and just do a gentle dip here if you prefer to do that. Totally optional, totally up to you. Now, two things, you can do one weight, hold it at your chest. You can do two weights at your sides, your choice, whatever feels right. Here we go. Three, two, one, and we're on. Just right leg only, no alternating. Got some nice core work going on here. Make sure you ground into that foot. You're nice and supported here. Doesn't have to be a low lunge. Make it work for you. Nice job. Nice. Make sure that front knee is tracking beautifully. Beautiful. We're almost there. You got it. Excellent. Keep it going. Last eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice job. Rest. Fantastic. So give that right leg a little shake and a little wiggle. Next, we're going to do a hammer curl. So in between our set here for our legs, we're going to do another bicep exercise. So first one we did with palms up. This time we're going to hold like a coffee cup. Shoulders are back and down. Double arms this time. Three, two, one. Here we go. Up and down. Nice and steady. Looking great, ladies. Well done. You got it. Excellent. Beautiful. So again, we're working the biceps here, just a different exercise. Same muscle group. Good, fantastic. You got it. Beautiful, keep it going. That's it, stay with me. Almost there. Beautiful, nice job. Excellent. We got 10 seconds to go. Beautiful. Seven, five, three, two, and one. Nice job. Fantastic rest. Excellent job. You need to switch weights out for the other side of your reverse lunges. Go ahead and switch them out. I'm going to hold on to these at my sides. Again, you can use one weight or you can use two. All right, this time we're gonna ground into that right foot. We're gonna take it back for a reverse lunge, either back to base or you hold it in space and you go ahead and do those knee drops. Three, two, one, here we go. So full disclosure, on Friday, I don't think anybody here was in class on Friday in our circuits class, but we did, we did a lot of lunges that day. And last night, holy moly, <laughs> not even last night, yesterday, I was at my son's hockey game sitting on the hard bench and I couldn't even sit on it because I felt those muscles working like crazy. <laughs> so I'm actually happy that this morning we're working out because those muscles needed a break. <laughs> It was like we had a major leg day on Friday. Good, hold on here, 10 seconds. You got it. Excellent, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Rest, nice job everyone. Fantastic work, excellent. Take a little water break. We need some triceps in next. All right, well done. All right, so we're gonna do a bent over tricep extension. Similar to our first bicep one, we're gonna do a single, single, double. We're gonna do a bent over position. So grab your weights. Feet maybe a little wider than hip distance apart. We'll karate chop from the hips. Bend into the knees here. Back is long, head stacked up on the rest of the spine. Shoulders pull back, elbows tuck in. Here we go, three, two, one, single. Single and double. That's it, beautiful. Now I want you to keep those knees bent and those hips karate chop back so you've got a little bit of weight into the heels here. 
Knees are stacked on top of the ankles. Good support there. Beautiful. Abs are pulled in. Enough so that you feel supported, but not enough that you feel like you can't breathe. Nice job. That's it. Keep it going. Looking great. That's it. Well done. You got it. Excellent, everyone. Keep it going. Nice. Some good glute work in there, too. <laughs> Fantastic. Keep it going for 12. Good. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, and rest. Well done. Fantastic. Awesome job. Excellent. All right. Set those weights up down to the floor. We're going to be doing a sumo squat with a front raise to a lateral raise. We're going to be working the deltoids. So as we're going to come down, we're going to go into a front raise. As we're going to come up, we're going to switch positions as we come into that second bend, alternating between the two, working the shoulders. Choose the weight that feels comfortable, accessible, but a little challenging. So don't feel like you've got to go super heavy, but enough that by the time you're done the set, you're like, yeah, that was just the right amount, okay? All right, shoulders pull back. Nice and tall. Remember, sumo squat position, feet out, toes in, toes out, heels in, sorry. Three, two, one. Here we go. Front raise. Down. Lat raise. Down. Beautiful. Nice and steady. Tailbone down. Tall through the spine. Press those inner thighs together, just like in our warm-up. Nice and wide. Looking great. Beautiful. Nice. That's it, ladies. I just love that we're together, honestly. You're just a force. I love that you show up for yourselves each time we come to the mat. That's awesome. Feel that strength in your body. Feel your feet energizing down to the floor. Arms are wide. That's it. Keep it going. Beautiful. Woo. Good. We got about 12 seconds left. Hang in there with me. See, this is where mind over matter. We got to get that brain tailing ourselves. We got this. Five, four, three, two, and one. Oh, nice job. Fantastic. Excellent work. Beautiful. Excellent. Next, we're going to be doing a little shoulder press. So, like I said, we're going to be doing a little bit of our different areas of the body, same area, sorry, different exercises, but def, same areas of the body. So we're going to go to a single arm shoulder press. Maybe you take a lighter weight. Maybe you go up a little bit. It's up to you. You choose what works for you. So we're going to do one side. We're going to do a little leg work. Then we're going to do the other side. Starting at 90 degrees, a military shoulder press. So elbow to shoulder, tall through the spine. Three, two, one. Here we go. Press. So we did this in our warm up, except we added that lateral bend. Now I really want you to focus just on those shoulders here. Nice job. Beautiful. That's it. Looking great. Make sure you're breathing. That's it. Well done. Fantastic. Beautiful. Keep it going. That's it. Keep it going. We got 12. Excellent. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Rest that arm. Fantastic. Well done. Great job. Excellent. All right. Next. We're going to be taking it into a front lunge. So we did some reverse lunges. Now we're going to do a front lunge. Same thing with this one. If you want to plant that foot forward and stay here and do another little bit of dips, you can. If you're comfortable kind of interchanging, alternating lunges, kind of coming forward, back through base, forward, back through base. Remember, you don't have to do a low, low lunge. It can be a totally high lunge here. So grab your weights, set them at your sides. Same movement with the lunges just kind of working them in a different direction. So it's going to feel a little different here. All right, three, two, one. Here we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Make sure your core is on. 
this is what I notice when I do front lunges. I got to be careful. I'm not kind of jolting into my back because you've got that kind of momentum forward and then you got to push it back, right? So I'm going to be really extra careful to keep my core kind of on here. Just being careful. Nice job. Fantastic. Well done. Almost there. Stay with me. Remember, high lunge, low lunge, you choose. Good. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and rest. Nice job. Whoo, grab some water. Whew. That's it. Well done. Beautiful. All right, we got our other side, left, le left arm, military shoulder press on that left side. And then we're gonna take it down to the floor for approximately three minutes of core. Then we're gonna get right into our yoga practice today. All right, here, 90 degrees, tall through the body. Rest your hand wherever it feels comfortable. Three, two, one, here we go. Beautiful. Now I'm not lending Kind of, sorry, not lending. I don't know where that word came out from. Not letting, is what I meant to say, my elbow kind of flow below my shoulder. This is what I tend to see. There's a little bit of that momentum. I want the shoulder to be working here the whole time. Not that it's wrong. I just want you to be able to keep that shoulder really turned on the whole time. So if you feel like you need that little micro break, drawing it down a little bit, go for it. Just be careful. Make sure it feels all right. Good, we got 10 seconds left. Five, four, three, two, and one, and rest. Excellent job, well done, beautiful. Awesome, excellent. Proud of you guys, well done. So now we're gonna take it down to the floor. Two choices, you can inchworm your way down into a plank, you can make your way down to the floor into a plank. We're gonna do a forearm plank today, unless you wanna do something a little extra, you're absolutely welcome to go ahead and do a push-up plank as your option here. So let's go ahead. I'm going to inch my way down. I want you to make sure that your wrists are nice and supported. If you are doing a forearm plank, a push-up plank, make sure you have no wrist issues going on. Forearm plank, elbows up underneath the shoulders. Here we go. Three, two, one. Roll down. Make your way out into your plank position. Here we go. Long body, heels back head forward now don't let your head hang i want you to lift that head onto the rest of the spine long through the body here feel that energy through the elbows here and that's just going to keep the shoulder blades kind of pressing up against the rib cage it's going to feel this make the shoulders feel nice and supported so we want that nice job keep it going That's it, fantastic. Nice big breath in and out. Beautiful, don't let that low back arch. Long, 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 you got it. Keep going. Three, two, one, set your knees down. Fantastic, press back onto your heels. Give yourself a little stretch here for the low back. Fantastic. Nice job. Now, we're going to come up and we're going to do a side plank here. So again, working our obliques, work, it's a side planks are pretty, are pretty amazing because they get into all different areas of body, not even just the core. So you could do a forearm side plank, you can do a kneeling side plank, you can do a push up side plank. It's kind of up to you. So let me walk you through them each option. Kneeling supported side plank we got one knee underneath our hips our right leg is going to be extend we're going to come up with the arms okay if you want to do a push-up plank this is probably going to be the most difficult especially on the shoulder personally i'm going to come down onto my forearm here you can extend the legs you can stack the legs you can kind of um extend the legs out to one in front is one in front of the other and then the other option is we come down forearm we extend the legs, stack them, and or place them in front of the other. Okay, whatever you choose. Let's get going in three, two, one. Mm. 
Beautiful. We're going to be here for about 30 seconds on each side. We've got about four, three, two, one. Rest. Come on back through center. And we're going to go ahead and switch over to the other side. If you got to turn your back to the camera, don't stress about it. I'm going to switch over to the other side of my mat, get myself situated into the side plank here. So bend into that elbow. I've got my right underneath my right shoulder. Extend up through the legs, stack or stagger. Find your side plank here. So it might be tempting to drop the hips here, but I want your hips lifted. And I want you to imagine you're between two panes of glass. So you've got your body nice and long and tall here. Beautiful. Oddly enough, this side feels way better. Four, three, two, one. That's it. Nice job. Come back through center. Give yourself a little stretch here. Press back onto your heels. Nice job, everyone. All right, let's go ahead and make our way onto our back. We're going to do our crunches, our bicycles. So lying down on the floor, hands behind the head. Interlace the fingers, knees bent. Here we go. In three, two, one. Lengthen the back of the neck. Exhale, lift. Beautiful. Make sure that sacrum is down, the spine is neutral. Don't let that pelvis dip down and flatten. You got it. Looking great. Beautiful. Keep going for 11, 10, 9, 5, three, two, and one, and rest it out. Nice job, beautiful. All right, let's get ready for our bicycles. So legs can come up, legs can stay down, and you can rotate, pull the knee in. If that doesn't feel good, you can just rotate and keep the knees bent, okay? So whatever feels right for your body, let's go ahead and extend up the legs if you want this option. This is our third option. You choose what works best for you. Three, two, one, here we go. Nice big pull of the chest towards the thigh, thigh towards the chest. I want you to feel that lift here. Work the muscles, let the head feel heavy. Sacrum really is down to the ground. Taking care of ourselves here by making sure that that area of the body is nice and supported. Beautiful, looking great. Good, you got it. Beautiful, stay with me. Good, you got it. Good. Keep going. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and rest. Excellent job, everyone. Beautiful. All right. Our last one for our core today. I know it's kind of short, but we're going to get right into yoga right after this. We're going to be doing some cocoons. So if this doesn't feel good for you, I want you to go ahead and go back into those regular crunches. Cocoons, our legs are going to lift at 90. Forehead is going to meet knees. Knees are going to meet forehead. And we're going to use the low abs to pull our sacrum off the floor. So we're going to exhale to lift, inhale to lower. Now the trick here, not even a trick. It's really a level of concentration here. There's so many ways that we can do this, right? We can use momentum, we can use our backs, but I want you to stay focused and use those low abdominal muscles, the rectus abdominis, that low, low one that's kind of right above that pubic bone. And I want you to pull it from there so that all the work is coming from that low abdominal area. You're getting the upper part by coming into the crunch here for the upper part. Let the head feel heavy. I'm also bringing my knees right back to that space above my hips to make sure my low back, my pelvis comes back to neutral. Nice job, big exhales here. We got 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Whoo! Nice job, everyone, fantastic. Oh, well done, everyone. All right, we're here. We're already at the dessert portion of class. So let's go ahead and get ourselves ready for that. Maybe we'll take our shoes off and socks off. Try to get yourself 
comfortable. Make sure your space is safe and trip hazard free. And we're gonna start on our backs today. Make sure you have your strap accessible and just switch up the music a little bit. Beautiful. All right, nice job everyone. I always feel a little excited about this part of class because we work so hard in our circuit and then this was like, oh, this is like the juicy part. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So we're going to start in constructive rest pose today with our knees knocked together and our feet wide. And we're just going to take our arms out to the side here, relax the shoulders. I'm just coming back to this theory or this theme, I should say, of just kind of coming down from the craziness and the busyness of our lives right now. Life is always busy, right? We know that. We're always going from one thing to the next. Now we've got the season of the holidays coming around where we're just in this flurry of thought, flurry of planning, cooking, celebrating, visiting, all the things that come around with the holiday season. Maybe we're not even talking about the holiday season, but we're renovating our house, right, Vicki? <laughs> There's the craziness that's associated with all the stuff, the preparation of things that we got in our lives. But here, I want you to take this moment just to center your attention. Take a moment to connect and to be and not to do. To simply invite your breath in and out of your body. To just connect into what you need today. So often self-care during these times of busyness or hecticness is the first thing off the list, right? It's the first thing that gets scratched off and ignored because we don't make the time for self-care. We don't think of it as important. We think of it as maybe as selfish or unnecessary. But research has shown, science has shown, that rest is essential to our well being, not just physically, but cognitively. We're more productive when we're rested. We have the ability to think more clear, we have more energy. There's just so many benefits. I want you to take today, this moment, just now, just to rest your mind, rest your body. If thoughts of that to-do list keep popping up, be relentless and close the door to that list and say, not now. Refocus your attention maybe on my voice or on your breath. Draw the breath deep to the belly and sigh it out. Sigh whatever you need out, out of the mouth. Are your shoulders still dripping forward? Can you let them drift away? From here, let's set our intention for our practice today. And maybe your intention is something you've invited to your practice before, but or maybe it's today it's customed to what you need today. Maybe it's a word, maybe it's a mantra, maybe it's an I am statement, whatever it is. Go ahead and set it for yourself.
And then when you're ready, let's go ahead and separate the knees and toe heel the feet so that the inner thighs come towards center, the ankles maybe touch. And we're gonna peel our sacrum slightly off the ground, energize through the glutes and through the feet. And we're gonna shift our sacrum and our pelvis over to the right side. And we're gonna twist our knees over to the left, opening up the chest into a strong T maybe turning the neck in the opposite direction if that feels good for you finding our supine twist here giving the side body a little stretch the upper part of the spine a little rotation opening up the heart space And then as you're ready, taking your inhale, let's peel that top leg up and then peel the bottom leg up as well. Reset your sacrum back to center and reset over towards the right, left side this time, shifting the pelvis over and twisting towards the right. Keeping the heart space open and accessible and relaxed. Drawing the tailbone down so that you don't feel like you're hiking through that hip. Try to find some length in the spine. Notice how that just invites a little bit more space, a little more room. Soften that top leg. And then as you're ready, let's peel that top leg up and then meet the top leg with your bottom leg. And we're going to extend the legs long and maybe reach the arms above our head as we're going to just create a little bit of that good morning stretch. You're just reaching long through the spine, just trying to create a little bit of that length. Maybe you breathe in and reach from fingertip to toe. And then go ahead and interlace your fingers, peel the knees up towards your heart, set the hands in front of the knees and give yourself a little hug here. Maybe rock your body side to side, just finding that gen gentle rocking motion, spreading the low back, spreading the back of the shoulders. Beautiful. And then as you're ready, let's go ahead and we're gonna set our feet down and we're gonna grab our strap. And we're gonna begin with our right leg in the strap. So setting the foot up towards the sky. If let's say you don't have a strap, don't stress, it's no problem. You can absolutely extend your leg here without a strap and maybe just set the hands behind the thigh. So don't feel worried that you need to have a strap for this. Now here, I'd like you just to go ahead and flex and point through the foot. And as you do so, just start to notice the back of the leg. How does it feel? Just kind of ease yourself into this flexion and extension here. Noticing the back of the leg, getting a little longer. <sighs> Beautiful. Maybe notice the calf and the back of the knee as you flex the heel towards the sky. Maybe you notice a bit of that front anterior tibialis on the front right side of the leg, kind of that shin area as you point the toes. Maybe you notice a little bit of activity or sensation there. Beautiful. Then when you're ready, let's go ahead and flex the heel. Toes are gonna to come to the side and I just want you to notice your hamstrings here. So as you take that strap, first of all, make sure your shoulders are relaxed. You're not straining through the upper body to hold the leg up. And just notice the hamstrings. And then go ahead and gently bend the knee and then extend the leg. So each time thinking about lengthening the leg, really reaching through that heel, keeping the toes kind of dripping down towards the floor. 
kind of finding that lovely bend and stretch here. Maybe coordinating it with your breathing, bending as you inhale, exhaling as you reach the leg long. Beautiful. And then when you're ready, the next time you find yourself reaching with your heel towards the sky, just keep your leg there for a moment. And just slowly ease that leg into that long position. You can absolutely have a bend in the knee. You kind of assess it yourself, what feels good. Maybe start to drip the toes towards the back of the room. Notice if you have a little more range there. Beautiful. And you want to stay along through the tailbone, giving the low back, the hamstrings, the glutes, a little stretch here. Good. Now, maybe you stay here. If you're taking care of your back and you don't want to do any rotation or if it just feels good to be here a little longer, feel free to stay here. If you'd like to, you can go ahead and extend your left leg long. And we're going to go into our twist for the IT band here. So switch the grip of the strap into your left hand. Extend the right arm into a half T. And then we're going to keep that hip joint, so that femur joint, really locked into the hip here. And then from here, I'd like you to pull up. Use your core. And we're going to twist towards the left. And as you do so, keep your shoulder blades down. So you'll notice as you're doing this twist, you're going to get possibly a really nice IT band stretch here. But if you were to lower your leg, and I encourage you to just experiment with this, if you were to lower your leg and kind of have it so that the hip joint and the femur joint are not really aligned, you don't really get into the side of the leg here. So just explore what feels good. And kind of getting into that IT band, getting into a little bit of the glutes here. Also, of course, giving that spine a little more rotation, which is always nice. Strengthening all those muscles along the back of the spine. Beautiful. Now, I'd like you to use the outside of the leg here to pull your right leg back up through center. Reset yourself back here. Maybe go ahead and bend into that left knee. Reset the left foot down. And I'd like you to take the strap and just set it off to the side for a moment. And we're going to do some gentle rotations through the ankle here. So just gently giving it maybe four or five rotations in one direction. And then four or five in the other. Kind of working through the joint here. Again, working with your own range of motion, it could be a really big circle, it could be a tiny little circle. Good. And then when you're ready, come back through center. And I'd like you to create, in dancer's lingo, it's called sickling of the foot. So it's almost like you're kind of flexing the foot and creating a C shape, heel towards toe, toes towards heel. And then you're gonna turn that ankle so that it's kind of facing towards the left side of the room. And while it's going to give our outer edges of the shin a nice little stretch here, and I can tell you from personal experience, I don't give that part of my body enough stretching, and I regret it when I work out. So that area can be very tender sometimes if we just don't take care of it. So just sickle the foot, give that anterior to the house a nice little stretch. Beautiful. Then come back through center. And now I want you to do the same thing. Create that sickling of the foot and then turn towards the right. And this is going to get your peroneals nice and stretched out. So the inside of the shin area or the lower part of the leg. Again, an area of the body we just don't give enough attention to. Terrific. Now come back through center, give that ankle and that those toes a little wiggle. And then let's go ahead and rest our hands and extend the leg out long. And on a count of 20, we're going to slowly release the leg down to the floor. And I want you to imagine your leg is growing even longer as you come down. So a count of 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 
15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Rest. Nice job. Take that left knee in towards your chest. Give it a little hip opener here. Notice how your right side of your body feels. Hopefully it feels very relaxed right now. Beautiful. And let's go ahead and grab hold of our strap. We're going to go ahead and set that underneath the left foot. And we're going to extend the left leg long. And again, just kind of find that space here. Set your hip in that neutral position, the joint of the femur and the hip. And from here, go ahead and point and flex. It's kind of starting to invite that length through the calf and through the hamstring. I'm just kind of exploring what feels good here. Beautiful. Just notice how it feels. Any tightness in the calf. Just try to ease yourself into it. Don't feel like you've got to force the stretch. Beautiful. And then the next time you find yourself flexing into your foot, go ahead and we're just going to feel that sensation of the back of the hamstrings here. Maybe you have to bend your knee and that's absolutely fine. But just notice what happens here. Are you hiking through that left hip? Can you really keep that left hip neutral? So if you had a ruler across hip bones, they'd be nice and equal. And then go ahead and bend and stretch that leg. So if you're hamstrings are feeling a little tight, just kind of ease into it. Your hamstrings are feeling really supple and really kind of flexible and good. Just, just feel that length as you reach through the ground, through the heel of the foot, kind of towards the sky. So just kind of give the hamstrings a little bit of love here. The idea of lengthening the body, lengthening the leg. Good. And then whenever you're ready, we'll go ahead and reach that leg all the way towards the sky, flex into the heel. And this time we're going to go into our rotation, but I want you to, again, anchor into that femur joint, take the left hand out, and we're going to go into our twist. So as I do this, and I'm really being careful to keep my femur joint right where it needs to be. I get to a space, I'm not even near the floor, and I can feel the sensation. And I'm, I'm good here. I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to try to just breathe into it. Try not to work against the resistance. Just kind of let your upper body and legs just relax. Again, maybe you even experiment here by letting the leg kind of drip down. And just notice how that feels differently. Good. And slowly make your way back in towards center. And go ahead and reset yourself back to the middle of your mat. And we'll take that strap and set it off to the side. And we'll just do a little rotations through the ankles here. And you can absolutely free, freely keep the left leg lifted without any support. If you want some support, kind of interlace the hands behind the thigh. Kind of moving here in what feels good. Beautiful. And we're going to go ahead and do our sickling of the foot here. So come back to center. And we're going to create a little C curve with that foot. So it's almost like you're scrunching the toes towards the heel and you're kind of pulling up through the heel. And then we're going to rotate the ankle towards the right side of the room, just stretching out the anterior tibialis. If you're prone to shin splints, this might be a really nice kind of way to stretch that area out 
that also doesn't feel too um, too intense because sometimes if you're having a flare up, kind of using a foam roller or something like that on that area is just it's just too tender. So know that you have this as an alternative. Beautiful. Come back through center. You can wiggle the foot out a little bit, wiggle the toes. And then go ahead and sickle the feet and then we'll rotate towards the left side of the room. Kind of giving the inside of the calf a little stretch. Fantastic. And then make our way back in towards center. And we're going to go ahead and lengthen out the leg up towards the sky. And on a count of 20, we're going to slowly release the leg down. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. Really invite that length. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Just take a moment here and notice how your hips feel, how your low back feels. Maybe take a nice big breath in through the nose, a nice big sigh out of the mouth. <sighs> Fantastic. Beautiful. Whenever you're ready, let's go ahead and we're just going to roll quickly onto our all fours position for a few cat cows. We're kind of already nearing the end of our yoga practice. It seems to go so quickly all the time, but got some good leg work, some nice hamstring work here in, in there today, which is always so helpful. So let's go ahead and find ourselves in our all fours position back as long shoulders are rolled back and down here. And as we're ready, we're going to take a little inhale, tilt the pelvis, roll the shoulder blades back, lift through the sternum. Exhale, pull the belly in, round through the spine, let the head drip. Press the hands into the floor. Inhale, arch the back, open up the heart. And then exhale, pull the belly in. I want you to notice as you do your cat cow, and I say this frequently because it's a reminder that each time we approach our practice, even movements we've done maybe a thousand times, every time we approach our practice, we approach it with a different perspective, a different sensation of the body, different emotional state, physical state, whatever the case may be. And each time, we learn something maybe different about our body. So there's, there's rhyme to reason why we often do very similar movements in our yoga practice. Because it's each time is like approaching it from that beginner's eye. Maybe you notice something a little different today or you did last week, you noticed something different about your practice. Maybe there's a little more fluidity or a little bit more sense of relaxation through the body. And or maybe it feels the same. That's absolutely fine too. Maybe you don't notice anything different. Beautiful. When you're ready, let's come back in towards our tabletop position. And we're going to make our way into our child's pose. Knees wide, big toes together, press the arms long, if that feels okay for you. We're going to take three big deep breaths here. And this time, I want you to focus your attention on the back of the body. Fill the rib cage. Soften the heart. Exhale out. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and take those hands over to the left side. Don't let that movement of anything into the hips. So keep your hips kind of stuck where they are. Pressing down through that right hip, extending that right arm long. Reaching that right arm so that you can get into the shoulder, into the ribs. 
Feel the breath kind of expand the rib cage here. Beautiful. And then walk your hands back through center over to the other side. Take that left hand, maybe a little bit forward of the right. Press down through that left hip. Expand the left side of the body. Notice any tension. Try to release the rib cage here. Beautiful. And then let's go ahead and make our way back in towards center. Walk your hands so that you can come up into kind of a half kneeling position. And we're going to swim those legs all the way to the side. And we're going to make our way slowly down to the floor. But before we do that, we're going to transition into a boat pose. So arms are going to outstretch. We're going to sit tall through the spine here. And I really want you to feel that lift through the back of the crown. Shoulders are down, arms are outstretched, feet are hip distance apart. And I just want us to gently lean back and just get into that open space between the clavicles. Make this feel really nice and accessible. Maybe you lift the feet and find a little bit more of that sensation to the low belly. Sit up tall, relax the jaw. And then whenever you're ready, go ahead and pull the knees in. And if it feels comfortable, start to roll yourself down to the floor, keeping the knees drawn in towards the heart. And here, I'd like you to maybe find Yogi's choice here. So maybe there's a pose that you want to do, maybe an inversion, maybe you want to do a shoulder stand or candlestick pose with the legs extended to the side up to the sky maybe you want to do a little rotation through the hip joint here maybe happy baby whatever is calling to you please take this opportunity to do it now if you want to go right into shavasana please do Whenever you're ready, finding whatever version of Shavasana you want today. Maybe you want to go into Supta Bhattakonasana, into our supine butterfly pose. Soles of the feet together, knees are wide. Maybe you want complete, kind of that blissful, relaxed state and extend the legs out long. Kind of just experiment. Actually, that's what I'm going to do because I don't want to put any work into my inner legs right now. I'm just going to let my body completely relax here. Now we're going to be here for two minutes and I want you to try your best for the next two minutes to focus on nothing but just the inhale and the exhale, that rise and fall of your belly. Let your shoulders soften, your eyes close. And just remind yourself that these two minutes are for you to do nothing.
And when you're ready, let's go ahead and start to deepen the breath and start to invite some gentle movement into the body, just bringing some awareness. Now remember, this is your practice. So if you feel like you need a little more time here, please take it. We'll turn everything off, so don't worry about that. And just take a little extra moment. It is Sunday after all, so why not? Maybe you'll roll yourself onto your favorite side, just kind of finding that space that allows us to transition from where we were to where we're going. And whenever you're ready, you can take that top arm and press yourself up into a seated position back into Sukhasana. Remember, stay where you want to be, please. This is so important that we honor ourselves. Beautiful. Maybe we meet with Nanjali Mudra with our hands pressed together and our spine long. And just as a, as a reminder that we are all one. Whether we're near or far, we are all interconnected. And with a gentle bow of our head towards our hands in honor of the light that shines within us all, may your heart always stay warm. May your smile always stay broad. And may the light that shines in me honor and see the light that shines in you. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, ladies, for joining me this morning. It was such an honor to practice this morning with you. I really, really hope you get to enjoy the rest of your day with a, a nice new renewed spirit um, off the mat. So from my heart to yours, as always, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you sometime this week. We will have some classes during the holidays, but it's gonna be a little skinnier schedule. Mondays and Wednesdays is when I'm going to be teaching for the two weeks I'm away on holiday. So I hope to see you. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope to see you again soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.